Hello class 9th. Hope you all are good. Now children, today in this video, we will continue the same chapter that is your respiratory system in biology. Okay. Now let's start the chapter. Now, next is your, okay, next is your physiology of respiration. The process of respiration is a complex and continuous process and it is completed in four steps. First is your breathing. Next is your external respiration, then is your internal or tissue respiration and fourth is your cellular respiration. Now what is breathing? Actually movement of fresh air from outside into the lungs through respiratory tract and foul air in the opposite direction is called breathing. Understood? Means movement of fresh air from outside into the lungs through the respiratory tract and foul air in the opposite direction is called breathing. And the process of breathing is an a, what a mechanical part of respiration. Actually, mechanism of breathing due to the poor musculature of lungs. Actually, muscu uh, the muscles of lungs are not so strong, so they cannot expand or contract of their own. So, breathing is brought about by changing the volume of thoracic cavity where lungs are present. Actually, our body is divided into two parts. Into upper, upper, upper part is called thoracic cavity and the inner part below uh, it is called what uh, abdominal cavity. You have read in the chapter of uh, what digestive system that there is a membrane that is called what diaphragm. What is called? It is called what diaphragm. Okay, now uh, diaphragm it divide our body cavity to two parts. Upper part is called thoracic cavity and the lower part is called what abdominal cavity. So what is saying now, uh, the, uh, what's happened? The breathing is brought about by changing of volume of thoracic cavity where lungs are present. And the mechanism of breathing, it is studied in two main uh, steps. First is called inspiration and second is called what? Expiration. Now first, what is inspiration? Inspiration is your movement of fresh air into the lungs is called inspiration. Right? What is it? Movement of fresh air into the lungs is called inspiration. Actually, you just uh, look at the process of inspiration. During inspiration, what's happened? The volume of the thoracic cavity is increased by a combined movement of your sternum. Uh, I think all of you have read uh, in the chapter of uh, skeleton. Sternum is your dragger shaped bone which is present in your chest. Okay? Through which your ribs are attached. And ribs and diaphragm. This is your what? Diaphragm. These are your ribs. Okay. So these are the uh, what? Combined efforts of sternum, ribs and diaphragm. The uh, what? Volume of this uh, thoracic cavity increased. And uh, <clears throat> what's happened uh, to uh, increase the volume of this cav thoracic cavity? These sternum and ribs, they move, move upward, forward and outward. Right? And this uh, diaphragm, which has actually a dome shaped, which is uh, actually, which is a dome shaped, uh, it uh, become straight. So what's happened? This cavity, the volume of this cavity increases. When of thoracic cavity results in the expansion of lungs and due to increase in the volume of lungs, then what's happened? The pressure of the air inside the lungs, it decreases as compared to the atmospheric pressure. And then, uh, what's, uh, therefore, what's happened? The fresh air, it uh, from the atmosphere, which is at higher pressure, rushes or pushes into the lungs through the respiratory tract and to equalize the pressure. In this way, what's happened? The air, what? The air, uh, which is rich in oxygen, enter into the lungs. And this process is called what? Inspiration. Right? Now, next is your what? Expiration. The movement of foul air from the lungs to outside is called expiration or exhalation. Right? And expiration is also just a opposite or it is a passive process. It involves a reverse uh, what of all the activities which takes place during the inspiration. During expiration, volume of thoracic cavity is decreased. Uh, why? How it, it is decreased? By the inward and downward movement of the ribs and sternum. And this uh, diaphragm, it what, up, bulge out 
towards up towards the upper side means actually this upward bulging of diaphragm it uh, causes uh, what the it decreases the what this thoracic cavity so the volume of this thoracic cavity decreases and then what's happened and the foul air it what removes from the uh, from the lungs to the outside and what it is called expiration right this is your control of breathing the rate and depth of breathing are controlled by two breathing centers which are present in medulla oblongata actually medulla oblongata is a part of brain right next is your external respiration exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide between the inhaled air and blood through the surface of respiratory organ is called external respiration actually first the oxygen enter in, into inside your lungs then what's happen this oxygen is absorbed by the blood and the blood give out what carbon dioxide the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide between the inhaled air and the blood through the surface of respiratory organ that is your lungs is called external respiration actually exchange of gases takes place because of higher partial pressure of oxygen in the inhaled air which you breathe in and that of carbon dioxide in the blood supplied to the lungs actually all of you know that what's happen uh, you um, breathe in the oxygen then this oxygen goes to lungs then from lungs it comes in the blood right then from blood what's happen it goes to uh, heart and then heart supply what pure blood or oxygenated blood by oxygen to each and every cells of the body right this oxygen break down the glucose and give out carbon dioxide now this carbon dioxide now come in the blood and then the veins they collect what deoxygenated blood from different cells of the body and then they bring that blood to the heart and then from the heart it goes to comes to lungs for what for purification means the blood which is coming in the uh, lungs through pulmonary artery it contain what carbon dioxide so this carbon dioxide is what is saying due to partial pressure of oxygen in the inhaled air then that of the carbon dioxide in the blood supply to the lungs what's happen this diffu uh, exchange of gases takes place and then what's happen the oxygen it diffuses into the blood from the alveoli of the lungs and carbon dioxide in the opposite direction right next is your internal or tissue respiration okay now uh, what's happened the oxygen come in the blood now this blood uh, what supply this oxygen to different cells or tissue uh, of the body so what's happened that is called what internal or tissue respiration actually exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide between the blood and the body tissue is called internal or tissue respiration the oxygen from the blood it diffuses into the body tissues whereas carbon dioxide from the tissues to the blood uh, because of higher concentration of carbon dioxide in the body tissues actually these are body tissues or body cells now right and uh, what's happened these are what capillaries now the carbon dioxide from these uh, body cells or body tissues come in the uh, blood and oxygen goes into the what is cells or tissue cells right next is your cellular respiration the biological oxidation of glucose in the cells is called cellular respiration actually why we need oxygen what is the main purpose of taking in oxygen this oxygen when reach to each and every cell it break down this glucose actually all of you know you have read in the chapter of the digestion that we eat the food right then this food is digested and then what digested food is absorbed by the wall of small intestine and now then this digested food in the form of glucose come in the blood and then it also reaches to each and every cell of the body so what's happened this oxygen this break down this glucose and give out what carbon dioxide water and 38 atp energy and this process is called actually cellular respiration so what is cellular respiration cellular respiration is the biological oxidation of glucose 
in the cells is called cellular respiration and the oxidation of glucose is a actually multi step actually it is not a very easy step it is a multi step process which is completed in series of chemical reactions and each step is catalyzed by a particular enzymes actually these there are uh, what so many steps are there in which what's happen this glucose break down and give out carbon dioxide and water right so many uh, intermediate products are also formed and all these uh, what uh, reactions which are uh, formed they are what uh, uh, catalyzed by a particular enzyme the energy release as a result of the oxidation of glucose is stored in the form of atp that is called adenosine triphosphate and water being an important part of the body is retained in the body and carbon dioxide being toxic um, uh, what beyond certain limit now it is eliminated this is our transportation of carbon dioxide which is produced during the oxidation of glucose carbon dioxide produced as a result of cellular respiration is to be removed from the body and it is transported to the lungs from various body tissues for elimination as a follows means about 77% of carbon dioxide combines with water of plasma forming carbonic acid 23% of carbon dioxide uh, combine with hemoglobin to form car carb amino hemoglobin and about 70% of what carbon dioxide combine with potassium and sodium carbonates forming potassium and sodium bicarbonates these unstable compounds when reach into the lungs they release carbon dioxide because of high high concentration of oxygen and presence of an enzyme that is called what carbonic anhydrase right in this way what happen this carbon dioxide reach to the lungs and through the process of what exhalation or what expiration what happen this carbon dioxide is removed from the body